welcome back to our channel and today we're going to create something special and that's called grunge cutout effect. Looking for something unique for your video? I think this might be just what you need for your next video. If you don't know me, my name is Dima from Studio Snack and let's start without further ado. Alright, we are in After Effects and we've got our clip on the timeline. First things, let's duplicate the clip. Now we'll start cutting out our object using the Roto Brush tool. Just highlight the area and hit space. You don't have to be super precise here, don't stress to be much about the tiny details. Once you're done, hit freeze, so the Roto Brush doesn't overload your computer. Now we have our main clip and the cutout object. Next we need to take a snapshot of the first frame. You can do this quickly with the FX console plugin, just click the camera icon and you are done. But I'll show you the manual way. Go to export, render and before that make sure you have selected only one frame on the timeline so it exports just that frame. Choose where to save the image and select PNG format and hit render. Now let's jump into Photoshop and open that image. Use the lasso tool to select your character. Again, no need to be hyper precision. Click on generate a fill, leave the text box empty and hit generate. Now you've got three versions of the photo without Tyler. I'll pick the second one and save it as a PNG. Call it without effects. Head back to After Effects and import your PNG. Now we've got uh, three lawyers. Duplicate the cutout object and add the Gaussian Blur effect. Set Blurness to 5. Then add the Curves effect and adjust it like I did. Next apply the Brightness and Contrast effect. Set Contrast to minus 100 and duplicate this effect. For the lower cutout layer of Tyler, add the Simple Choker effect. Set Chalk Mate to minus 7. Then add the Fill effect and pick White color and move it a little bit to right. After that apply the rough and edges effect and set border to 26, sharpness to 10 and scale to 15. Now select the object layers, create a new composition and call it cutout. Inside this comp add the circles halftone texture on top. We are about to create an effect from our previous video, so if you haven't seen that, I'll drop a link below this video. Duplicate the top layer of your object, place it above the halftone texture and name it mask. For the texture, set track mate to mask. Add the Gaussian blur effect to the halftone texture, set blurness to 12. Create a new adjustment layer and name it threshold. Add the add grain effect, set viewing mode to final output, intensity to 1.8 and size to 0.5. Then add the CC threshold effect, set channel to RGB and threshold to around 165. Go back to the main composition, add the drop shadow effect to the cutout layer, set direction to the left, softness to around 30 or 40 and distance to 18. Now let's animate the appearance using position. Set keyframes at frame 20, go back to the first frame and move the character down. Next, we'll make the clip without effects appear right after the cutout layer is fully visible. Create a new appearance animation for the main clip, setting keyframes from frame 15 to the first second frame. Create a new solid, make sure it's black, call it dots. Place it under the cutout layer, add the CC ball action effect, set grid spacing to 6 and size to 38, add Gaussian blur effect, blurness set to 2. Create a new adjustment layer above the dots layer and name it threshold, add the add grain effect, set viewing mode to final output, intensity to 3.1 and size to 0.8. Then add the CC threshold effect, set channel to RGB and threshold to around 127. Feel free to tweak this value to match your clip. Copy and paste the keyframes from the main clip without effects onto the dots layer and the threshold layer to create a similar appearance effect. Now let duplicate the clip without effects and place it on top. Remove all keyframes and create a mask wherever you like. Duplicate this layer and on the bottom layer add the fill effect and choose white color. Add the rough and edges effect, 
set border to 8.1, sharpness to 10 and scale to 13. Move the lawyer slightly to the right to create a paper-like effect. On the top mask lawyer, add the brightness and contrast effect, set contrast to minus 56. Add the add grain effect, set viewing mode to final output, intensity to 5 and size to 0.6. Finally, add the drop shadow effect, set direction to the left, distance to around 17 and softness to 27. Name this mask lawyer's elements. Repeat the same steps for a second mask, you can create a mask wherever you like. Now let's animate the appearance of our elements. For elements 1, set position and opacity keyframes at frame 20. Go back to the first frame, move the layers down, set opacity to 0. Do the same for elements 2, but make them appear from the top to bottom. Select your elements and create a new composition. Call it Elements. Create a new adjustment layer, call it Camera Shake. Add the transform effect, click the stopwatch next to position and enter the expression I used. Next create another adjustment layer. Call it Posterize and add the Posterize time effect. Set frame rate to 12. Create one more adjustment lower, name it Flicker, add the brightness and contrast effect. Click the stopwatch next to brightness and enter the expression I used. Place the Flicker lower under Posterize. For the final step, add the paper texture on top of all lawyers. Set the blending mode to screen and apply the curves effect, just curves like I did. And that's it! We've got this super cool effect and I absolutely love how it turned out. You can also add various transitions, unique and very cool textures and of course sound design to take your video to the next level. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments. See you in the next video. Good luck!